Hey brothers and sisters, I am outside. It is 82 degrees, 83 degrees on my car thermometer. It was 83 degrees on 222, February 22nd, 2018. And my camellia is blooming, which is normal for this time, even though it is so warm. And I just got home from um, the hospital. Uh, doing a visit that I don't normally do for the cardiac intensive care unit and it was just a wonderful time. I put uh, Lexi's inside because she has a tendency to bark at squirrels and so if she were out here while I'm trying to do a video I would probably get frustrated with her that she would start barking if she saw a squirrel or if she wasn't getting enough attention. So she's had her attention at the hospital. Uh, it was a great visit. Um, and I've just got so many things that uh, Tangent Terry, I know it's hard to follow me because like, I'm, I'm just like, this is like how I'm writing. I'm writing, writing, writing. I'm writing, writing, writing. <laughs> God is just showing me all of these things. And I don't know, um, I don't even, I, I can't even really keep up. Plus, um, what I'm learning from so many other people when I go on to watch other people's videos that it's just, it's just, it's like a fire hose, like, whoo, <laughs> whoo, okay, so let me think, where do I want to start, okay, um, 222 and 333 are numbers that are important to me, today is, um, the beginning of Somewhere around this time frame is uh, when I was born again 13 years ago. I'm about to have my 13th birthday. I'm about to be 13 years old, but it started on 222. And the reason why I remember that was that um, if y'all watched my testimony, um, you know I was suicidal and I um, had God telling me about um, my husband's adultery. And on February 2nd, 2005, um, we were in Christian counseling, even though I didn't understand the Christian counselor. He would talk, he would use words that I didn't understand. And here I've been in church all my life, uh, like propitiation. I remember him using propitiation and not understanding that. I remember him, um, the very first visit that we had, because uh, we saw him for a year, but the very first visit that we had, which was at the beginning of um, January of 2005, I had seen a Jewish counselor for six months before that, a Jewish marriage counselor, and uh, and my husband wanted to switch to this um, this man that had been recommended to him, who was a Christian. And I remember the very first visit, he mentioned the uh, tsunami that had happened in Asia, that had killed all those people, and he talked about how God was in control of every event that he was a sovereign God and both of my both my husband and I did not understand that uh, because we you know we weren't born again but on 222 um, in working with this um, counselor I'd said I, I, I have I've had enough I can't handle um, staying in the same house with him because he's continuing to cheat on me and I mean it was just it was it was driving me crazy and it was so unhealthy right I mean I was being expected to um, you know be available at all times because he had um, sex addiction problems and I couldn't guarantee my health right I was I was a basket case I couldn't guarantee my health so on 222 I moved him into an apartment not far from us and um, sometime between getting him out of the house and um, my daughters going on their first mission trip to Jamaica in March, I think it was around the 7th of March is when they went, I'm not positive, um, but sometime between him getting out of the house and that first week of March, I got born again. I was on the floor of the shower 
I was crying out to God that nothing I was doing was fixing things, that I was going to Christian counseling twice a week, once by myself, once with him. I was on um, drugs, you know, I was doing everything I could. Um, but when I cried out to the Lord and asked him to kill me, which is what I asked, I said, God, just please take my life. I can't fix it, nothing is helping. I had been um, trying to save this marriage since God had awakened me on June 28, 2004 at one o'clock in the morning and had told me my husband was having an affair with my best friend while he was a deacon in the church and I was um, holding her hand and singing in a singing ensemble. Um, so when I got born again, oh happy day, <laughs> um, I, the depression was I mean, I can't say that I didn't have depression after that, but the, the burden, the burden was just lifted. I was filled with this love that I have never, ever, had never experienced in my life. Um, it was, I just had joy and peace and love and I went to Walmart and I spent three hours looking at people um, and just thinking that everybody was a soul and, and who, who else was suicidal? Who else was depressed? and that the only answer was Jesus Christ and just giving up your life, surrendering your life to him. Trying to fix it on your own was not, was not the answer. Not fixing it on your own is the answer. Surrender is the answer. But I didn't have people telling me this. I have to say it really was, my whole salvation really was led by the Lord. Um, I never had anybody in church ever question whether I was truly saved or not. I never had anybody ask me if I was born again. Um, we were all just doing church and thinking we were good people and obviously for the church that I was in, it was a liberal Baptist church that didn't really uh, believe, it, well they didn't believe in the inerrancy of the scripture and so um, good people but lukewarm and probably very, very few in there were truly saved. And then to have four of the pastors know about my husband's adultery for a year and a half, I mean, it was a two and a half year affair, but um, when she called, when her husband found out about it, he uh, went and told the church about it. They did not tell me. <laughs> so there were, there were about 40 people in the church that knew about it and no one told me. So when God told me a year and a half later, and in fact that, that friend had called me on the phone when, she, when her husband was divorcing her and I was crying on the phone with her about her divorce after 20 years of marriage because um, these were like our best friend couple. You know, We went out uh, on double dates with them and everything. Uh, I was crying on the phone with her not knowing that her husband was divorcing her because of my husband having an affair with her. I later came out, came to find out this was not her first affair, but of course she had told my husband that. So all of, I mean, really, I was just overwhelmed from June 28, 2004, one o'clock in the morning when God started talking to me till, till, I mean, he just kept talking to me. He kept talking to me. I remember sitting down with the Bible for the first time and um, asking him, is the Bible alive? Will you speak to me through the Bible? and opening up to 1 Corinthians 5, sexual sin in the church. And I was blown away. So um, I'm very grateful for God's voice. I listened to his voice. It is not, it's only one time been an audible voice. That was just a whisper of mom. But um, I've heard his voice voice twice inside my body. Once was a whisper of my name. Once was a booming loud voice of my name and then being told not to divorce my husband. So y'all know I've got a whole, whole thing about what God says about divorce and remarriage because I had grounds. I had grounds for divorcing my husband and God yelled, I mean, he yelled. It was, it, was, it was scary. It was a booming loud voice when I filed for divorce telling me not to divorce my husband. And so here now, uh, you know, he divorced me. I was served divorce papers in the church parking lot. Um, I have been divorced since um, 2008. He's telling me he loves me right up to the very, even the day of the divorce, I will love you forever. Um, oh, maybe we'll get remarried someday, all of that. So 
I've been a stander. I uh, have taken a lot of flack for it, but so did John the Baptist. John the Baptist was beheaded because he told Herod and Herodias that they were in an illegal marriage. So I stay far away from that, and um, God has been faithful to me. He's been so faithful, and he is my husband, as it says in Isaiah, he is my husband. But I am still honoring my vows that until death do us part, which is what the Bible has to say. So somewhere around the 222 to the beginning of March is when I was born again. And my life, I'm going to be 13 years old, and 13 is an interesting number. Uh, too. Um, so let's see, my last video I had had a dream um, and then um, I had another dream on the morning of the 21st, um, which I really didn't get a chance to process because I was awakened by the third text from my friend um, telling me that Billy Graham had died. So when I woke up, I was like, it was the third text and I woke up and I went oh my goodness I had this another dream and in this dream just very shortly short because I really haven't processed it um, I'm in um, I'm in a room with my college roommate who was my maid of honor uh, which I thought was kind of interesting because this was back in 1982 when I got married um, and I'm in a room with my college roommate my maid of honor and it's a beautiful room it's it's a dorm but for some reason we have this beautiful large dorm room that everything is decorated in um chocolate brown and a beautiful and um, once again a blue green turquoise color which was in my dream about my grandmother's all my grandmother's jewelry in heaven being this blue green so i don't really know what the blue green thing has to do uh for a second there I just thought about it. I met a man at the hospital today he clearly had the Holy Spirit he was wearing a blue green shirt he had gorgeous eyes and I looked in his eyes and I was like you know Jesus don't you he said oh yes I know Jesus and uh, just had a wonderful visit with him and I told him I'd had the uh, two dreams about the blue green color and um, you know maybe it's maybe it's my eyes my eyes are kind of blue green I think they're blue Sometimes people say they look blue green. I don't know, uh, but the eyes are the window to the soul, and we want to have a single eye, a single eye, not be double-minded. Have a single eye. I'm not exactly sure where the scripture is on that. Uh, but in the dream, the weird thing was, I was telling my uh, college roommate, I was telling her there is something Masonic in this room from the Masons that needs to be taken out and removed. And that is so strange because I don't ever, ever, I'm not one of these people that follows a lot of this um, more out there kind of stuff. I don't really think about Masons. My grandfather was uh, a Mason. Uh, and so I don't know if that fits in with that I just had the dream the day before or two days before of my grandmother. Um, and you know, I'm a fifth generation Atlanta and a 10th generation Georgian. So I, I probably have a lot of Masons in my past, but I don't have any Mason connection now. So I really don't understand that. Uh, I know some people, so when I woke up and then I heard Billy Graham had died, I, I know some people have complained about um, that he may have had some Mason connection. I don't know. I really don't want to know. <laughs> I really don't want to know. So, um, the strange thing is, one of the, uh, so I want to try to go into some videos that I want to make connections to. Um, there is a woman who, um, I watched her video for the first time, her, her name is Ladder Rain 333 which always gets my attention. 222s, 333s always get my attention. Um, and she had a, a dream, God woke her up with a dream with a message, a prophecy that said um, that things would increase quickly, increase quickly, I think of the words. I'm gonna put the link into the video. I didn't write it down, but it's basically, she said that things would increase quickly when Billy Graham died. Now, the amazing thing about it was, before she gave the message, she was saying, uh, she said, you know, uh, Billy Graham died, I went back to my, journal 
and on this particular date I received this message about Billy Graham so before I had listened to what the message was I went to go check out the date and the date was exactly 1530 days before his death on the 21st 153 hello zero 1530 I was like whoa because these 153s are coming up a lot at least for me I don't know about y'all uh, we've all got I mean I got a lot of numbers that are coming up a lot of numbers are coming up um, so I'll put a link into her video um, I, I was reading a lot of people's comments um, of different things um, yesterday being the 21st there was someone was saying that the scripture that talks about that after Moses died three days later Joshua was was told to go into the promised land so um, 21st 22nd 23rd it, it automatically becomes a high watch not that I'm like oh you know this is it I'm not I, God hasn't said God hasn't said anything to me and I'm not saying that he has said anything because I'm telling you these people but you know we look at numbers we look at dates we look at numbers God loves his numbers and he gave so many numbers and dates as pointers I mean he's the one that said on the third day after Moses um, died that Caleb was told just excuse me Joshua was told to go in um, another woman had had a, a dream about Caleb and Kristen Kristen being Christ follower or something like that um, there is a man named John Dane, D-A-N-E. Um, he had, he had so many, so many things. Um, I'm trying to think if I even wrote them down. It's just been, it's just been crazy. Um, strange thing too was yesterday, I was writing all this stuff down. You know, uh, Billy Graham died at 7:46 a.m. I had. Uh, I, I, you know, you, I know I went to a Billy Graham um, crusade when I was a teenager, but I didn't get saved there. And um, the strange thing is, um, I went to go see Ann Graham Lotz speak, um, I think it was about a year ago, a year ago at a different church. I heard, went to hear her speak. She was actually recording a, a TV show, Huntley, Huntley something. I think it's out of Canada. She was recording a TV show, so we were there for that. And she was um, teaching about Daniel. Uh, I've never done a Daniel Bible study. I'm now in my fourth Revelation Bible study. But last year in April, Ann Graham Lotz uh, started warning Christians that the rapture was about to happen. And she said that it had to happen. She believed that it has to happen by or around the 70th birthday which I've done a video about the 70th birthday the May 14th because her birthday her 70th birthday now this is the daughter of Billy Graham her 70th birthday is seven days after Israel's 70th birthday there's a seven there's um, actually 14 is seven plus seven 21 is three sevens um, man, I could just, there, it's really, it really is hard to stay focused. I'm so sorry. Okay, back to the 153. So she had a, uh, this latter rain 333 had 153 times 10 days of prophecy about Billy Graham to that day, right? Then it turns out that the, 23rd today is the 22nd obviously I've got another big thing about the 22 because there are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet uh, 222 is when God woke me up and said things God hates and then 333 he woke me up and said God permeates the Christian this was all on the same um, night that he woke me up with those two numbers um, plus here this latter rain woman with the prophecy she has 333 well Jeremiah 33 3 says call to me and I will tell you secrets of things that are about to happen that's pretty key 
So let's see. 153 days from the Revelation 12 sign is it's either today or tomorrow. Uh, another comment put in that the last um, blue blood moon was in 1866. I want to say it was, I think that's right, 1866, 153 years ago from this time. The latter rain woman, she also had pointed to John 21, 1, 21 11, which a lot of us see one one ones, right? Which I think of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. When I see 11, 11, I think of Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and me or us, right? Um, I mean, really, there's just so much stuff. Uh, let's see. Okay, so the strange thing was then yesterday, I looked, I started, I'm just going to sort of go through my notes. I, I know this is it's crazy because it's like all over the place. Um, but I looked at my phone. It just happened to be 2 o'clock on 221 and my battery was at 53 percent and I wrote down Billy Graham died today at 746 a.m. there have been other people that have um, have talked about that but also 746 they've looked in the Strong's number but 746 is also a 17 right and we know that 17 means victory so the next time I look at my clock it just happens to be on my phone it's 222 and said, so, you know, I said, hmm, I think I'm going to just do the Francis Santa Rose thing of spinning my Bible around, not spinning it on my finger. I've had people like, no, just closing my eyes, praying and say, God, the Bible's alive. I want to see what you have to say. And moving the Bible around so I can't tell if it's Old Testament, New Testament or whatever. And just going in. The, I, don't, I don't even stick my thumb in. I stick my fingernail in, right, to see if I can get to the exact page. And the page that I wake, that I open up to is um, Psalm 22. I see Psalm 21 and 22 on one page, and then on the other page is, uh, which interesting enough, it was page 449. I know Pastor Sandy had talked about the 490 years. I just watched that this morning, the 490 years, which is 49 times 10. So I thought it was interesting that I'm on page 449. I'd written this down before I saw Pastor Sandy's teaching. Um, and let's see, just some verses that I wrote down. And raise a victory banner in the name of our God. May the Lord answer all your prayers. <laughs> now, I know that the Lord rescues his anointed king. He will answer him. I mean, he's rescuing the anointed. We're the anointed with the Holy Spirit. But in this case, it was the anointed king. So I put king in parentheses. He will answer him from his holy heaven and rescue him by his great power. That's verse 9. And then verse 9, excuse me. Give victory to our king, O Lord. Come, answer our cry for help. That's what we're all doing, right? When I was looking at um, the Psalm 22s, uh, excuse me, the Psalm 22. Let's see if I could just show you. Ah! Uh, okay, so see Psalm 22. You see I made some notes on the top of my Bible. And then it goes over to Psalm uh, 18. It says Psalm 19, but this is Psalm 18, which I already had um, that marked. And the strange thing is, not the strange thing, but Psalm 18 is another 222 because Psalm 18 is word for word 2 Samuel 22. And I remember the first time God led me to 2 Samuel 22, I just cried. I sobbed. I sobbed. It was like the story of my life. 2 Samuel 22. So then that is what is in um, Psalm 18. And over, I mean, I don't know if you can, I don't know. It's probably really too hard to tell. But as, as I'm looking at it, I am looking at the words um, victory, rescue, and heart's desire. So let's see, Psalm 18 is 2 Samuel 22, and today is the day before 2-22-18 in the year 5777 is what I said. Um, so some of the things that I had underlined, um, I chased my enemies and caught me, 
caught them, I did not stop until they were conquered. Um, and then there's a rescue, a victory, a rescue, a victory. Now, the interesting thing, too, is Psalm 19, which is about the heavens proclaiming the glory of God, which, of course, the Revelation 12 sign being 153 days before, and that is the, the heavens proclaim the glory of God. The Revelation 12 sign was the proclamation of, of God and, um, and the rapture, being the baby being caught up. Day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make him known. They speak without a sound or word. Their voice is never heard. Yet, their message has gone throughout the earth and their words to all the world. God has made a home in the heavens for the sun. It burst, this is verse 5. It burst forth like a radiant bridegroom after his wedding. It rejoices like a great athlete eager to run the race. Well, we're looking for that wedding, right? We are. On 316, it will be one year to the day that I had my first rapture, when I became rapture aware. My first rapture dream was being a bride. And they were telling me, all these people were telling me that Jesus was coming to get me. So I just went onto YouTube and did search bride dream rapture and that's how it all started for me um so it the bursting forth like a radiant bridegroom after his wedding well the bursting forth of the light of jesus in the clouds is what we're looking for um so re go ahead and read um Oh, and I noticed it was interesting too that Psalm 18 started the verse that on this page that started it was verse 37. There's some 37s that um, have been important to me, and um, and so victory. Look through these these things. Look at the victories. Look at the rescues. Um, in in um, in chapter 20. Now I know that the Lord rescues his anointed king. That's the one I, I mentioned before. Um, may he grant your heart's desires and make all your plans succeed. I did look up heart's desires, and I believe there were six instances of heart's desires, and two of them were on this page. So that's when I, I think, I mean, God is like saying, hey, pay attention. Well, our heart's desire is to go is to go home go home which by the way the song is lamb of god da, 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 da. it's that david phelps song that he sings with his daughter lamb of god i think it's Ag agnes day uh, a g n u s d e i i don't know but that's the tune i've got going in my background um today um yeah so look up Rescues, victory, heart's desires. Um, okay, let me see. Let me get back to my notes. <laughs> oh gosh, 28 minutes. Mm -mm. Yes, it is six times uh, heart's desire. It's in Job 17, 11. Another 17, another 11. A seven... 111. Uh, it's also in Psalm 37, verse 4. Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart, give you your heart's desires. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, okay. Okay, so then I had a dream this morning, very, very short. It, I woke up. Um, it was 4.22 a.m. The dream was so short. But it was this weird dream about uh, being in a parking lot, I believe with my friend Ferry. I'm not sure. I was with someone else. And I see a, what I can't really tell what it is, is floating down. And it turns out it's a lion, a male lion in the parking lot. And I go over to talk to the lion and I wake up so I went from there um, 
and I just read a whole bunch of stuff. I looked at, I looked, I started looking at the 422. I went to read Psalm 22:4. Our ancestors trusted in you and you rescued them. Psalm 22:4. Our, ans our ancestor trusted in you and you rescued them. I had underlined that um, the day before of a rescue and then I wake up at 422, which is also a two, 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 four twos, <laughs> right? Two plus two plus two, two. Um, I went to go see if there was a Hebrews 422, which there wasn't. And then I just happened to flip to Jeremiah, um, which was 422 is, My people are foolish and do not know me, says the Lord. They are stupid children who have no understanding. They are clever at doing wrong, but they have no idea how to do right. Um, and then verse 23 was about Jeremiah's um, coming vision of disaster. So. I'm not a, I'm not one who reads a lot of Jeremiah, so I just took off and read uh, read a lot of Jeremiah. Um, the strange thing too was I ended up for some reason I wanted to go onto a website called, called BibleNumbersForLife.com to go look for the 422, and instead I found they had this. Facebook normally I just go to the website but for some reason I did a Google search and they had this Facebook page of a of where they had done a number study on 4 1 2013 for the number 23 I know this is hard to follow I know I'm sorry because um, I mean I could show you but it's too hard to read my writing but think about that y'all 4 1 April 1st is Easter, it's Resurrection Day, it's Easter Sunday, and it is the day after the March Blue Blood Moon. No, excuse me, Blue Moon, excuse me, Blue Moon, not Blue Blood Moon, Blue Moon. Even though I really think that we are gonna be gone before then by, you know, I mean, uh, there, Dunamis 333, another 333, um, he has some really great research um, and he's put he's put it into my uh, videos before. Um, I'll try to see if I can copy and paste it and put it in the description box. But it is very interesting that there are seven Sabbaths, um, with the sixth March sixteenth being um, the seventh Sabbath. Um, tomorrow, the twenty third, which is the hundred and fifty third day since the Revelation twelve sign is uh, is the Oh gosh, it's the fourth or the fifth Sabbath, I think, is what he has in his thing. Um, so anyway, the 23 in, on Bible Numbers for Life, the 23 is for death, and um, 46, now remember Billy Graham died at 7.46 a.m., the 46 is for I'm, I'm, I really, I probably should just show you. See this? I'm not making this stuff up, okay? <laughs> um, the 46 number is for resurrection. That, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying anything about, I mean, obviously Billy Graham is a great evangelist, but I'm not saying he is a Bible character, okay? But, um, and there are a lot of other people that talked about the prophecy. I ended up watching that guy's um, video about his prophecy in 2009, um, which was really amazing. Um, I saw something about Benny Hinn. Well, Benny Hinn did not predict that the rapture would happen. Benny Hinn predicted revival would happen. Well, yeah, Benny Hinn's gonna have a revival because he's gonna be left behind. And when we all leave, maybe he'll get saved and he will repent of his sins and he will be one of the tribulation saints. But he is definitely a false teacher, absolutely, 100%, no doubt. Um, but he did not predict the rapture, he predicted a great revival. Um, so the number 46, and I know I'm gonna get grief about that too, that I said somebody is 100% a false teacher. Oh. 
All right, it's two times 23. And the reason why it's resurrection is that 23 being death, that two times 23 is like dividing the 23, that it's the division of death and that Jesus destroyed death. Now get this, it gets even more interesting. Humans have 46 chromosomes. The 46th book in the Bible is 1 Corinthians. The 46th chapter is where Jacob says of Joseph, and Joseph is a type of Christ. Um, he says, Jacob says to Joseph, Now let me die as I have seen your face, that you are still alive. Well, of course, Jesus is still alive. So, uh, yeah, just so much. Um, then, okay. Oh. I can't, I just can't do it all. I gotta, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna break it up into another one. Um, Cause I haven't talked about Jeremiah. I haven't talked about the five, uh, the 311 or the 1113, uh, the 113. There's just so much. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. I, I hope you got something in that and uh, put, put in the comments anything that you find uh interesting we're just all in this together it's really exciting times god bless you i love you and i do pray for everybody who watches my videos whatever you've got going on in your in your family life and in your personal life and that you will hear clearly from the lord and be full of joy all right bye-bye